Huron. Isn't Huron a lake in the Great Lakes? There's Superior, Huron, Michigan, St. Clair, and Erie. Eerie, 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 eerie. That needs its volume turned down. What's so. happening, everybody? Welcome to the Glass Academy Gathering Point Show. We are here in Dearborn, Michigan. Michelle is here as well. I think she might be in the camera. Can you see her in the camera? The show must go on. You can for right now, for sure. But we are on our 124th show, and we're excited to be here tonight. Uh, we've got Marcy, Jacob, Michelle, and me. I'm Chris, and we are here to teach you folks about glass blowing as well as uh, show you how glass blowing works, do a bunch of cool things. We've got a great lineup today. Uh, the name of the show is The Gathering Point, and there's all kinds of information here. Generally, the first five minutes of our show, we have the camera on our board so that you guys can tune in and check out all the special featured things happening tonight. As you can see, we've got our warm rupper that starts, but that comes immediately after our contest. And that contest is to get your name inscribed on the GA Cup, world famous GA Cup. Jake, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to run over and show off the GA Cup. I think I might just use the zoom button. <laughs> I'll grab it. And there it lies. And it's not light, folks. And I actually just scribed in the past five shows uh, winners in there. And my name skates. was three, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on a three show winning streak. You got your hand cramped up and signing your own name? That's right. <laughs> Guess we're going to have to put an end to that tonight in our competition. But, but it all is all right because I did spell my own name wrong on the last one. I forgot the C in the middle of Jacob. <laughs> nice. That'll go down in history, I folks. was just so surprised I had three in a row. But you see, this is one beautiful looking ceremonial, uh, kind of inspired by the Stanley Cup. It's the GA Cup. Mm -hmm. And we've got history in the making on here for every one of our competitions before the show, whoever wins. And I do see some Marcy's on there, and I do see some Chris's on there, and Couple I see Michelle's some Michelle's. Right back here. All right, all right, all right. Well, we're going to put this down, and we're going to talk about our competition. <laughs> Competition's going to be a repeat tonight, folks. We're going to go for a classic and a top-voted three best all-time challenge, which is the longest raindrop. And I think we all know who the winner of the last time we did this was. It was me, folks. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and do it again. And we stand on the bench. We have beautiful products. Marcy, why don't we just walk over here real quick? Because these are always available on the website and are a beautiful recycled glass, uh, beautiful product, super elegant and delicate. It's a nice combo of words there. But these are made, you drip the glass off the pipe, off the original heat, one chance to get it right. Uh, everyone's got their own success rate, and it's very difficult, contrary to how simple they look. And then we take them over to the torch, and Marcy finishes off these beautiful hooks on the torch, uh, loops them around, polishes them, and then we re them so there's no stress in the glass. So they're quite a time-consuming product, but you're going to see the actual creation off the pipe is pretty quick. And the timing needs to be right. And the other thing I like about them is that they're made out of the 100% recycled glass. And that means that the gradation of blue in the glass in each one of those changes throughout them all. So if you buy multiples, it's pretty sweet because you have a darker blue and a lighter blue, almost to a transparent, mixed in that group. So they're always changing, which makes them all one of a kind, which is pretty sweet. And we're using recycled glass. That's the coolest thing about recycle. We got a whole section dedicated to recycled glass and we work with it all the time. Folks, we got a beverage area here now. If you stop by the gallery, fresh, cold drinks. Getting prepared for our beverage counter in the future. Yeah, right, I think we're so. going to spin the mold and get it going. Yep. So this is how we start the show, folks. If you haven't seen Marcy, you're going to see her in a second when she goes. She's on the camera. We got Chris, we got myself, and Michelle. And we're all glass artists, and we all partake in the challenge. So 
We spin the mold here to see who's going first. Watch the action. And we were Watch. talking about it before the show. It really does matter. Watch out. It really does matter who goes first because you see the technique. You see the way the glass is moving uh, on that specific day. And the person who goes last truly does have an advantage. And look at that toss. Oh, my God. Oh, oh mom goes boy. first. Very nice. My mom was here earlier, so we'll say Michelle goes first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more. Getting it Gotta wound get up. Ready. It's like the discus, the shot put. Almost busted a toe there. <laughs> it's almost, jeez, it's good mix. Oh, number two, all number right, two. All right, all right. <laughs> Down to Marcy and I. <laughs> you guys see the action? It's too much. Much too much. That almost stood up. Yeah. Here it comes. Oh! All right. So I spoke about, there it is, getting the uh, last chance opportunity to show everybody up. So we're going to watch it all go down here. The rules are you get one pipe. You can go with, should we specify what punny or you do whatever you want? Whatever It's you really want. about length. It's not about... Uh, the size of the raindrop. So whatever punny you want, one gather, or whatever, however many gathers you want, but you stand up on the bench, you let it fall. Once it's falling, there's no reheating it back up, no using a torch. One drip, let it hang, let it solidify before it hits the floor, and whoever's got the longest raindrop wins. And if it touches the floor, disqualified. Disqualification. It, it can't touch the floor until you're done. Then we lay it down over That's here right. and we'll mark them distance wise. Maybe even use a tape measure. All, All right. right. Let's see it, mom. So any, pipe? any pipe you want. You want the mic for this one Who's or you first? want me to keep talking it? Shell? All right. She needs to concentrate, folks. And seriously, I, I think I mentioned it last time we were here. Recycle's pretty low. You might want to do clear. Um, I have mentioned how we are going to be putting a beverage counter here in the future, selling regular drinks, alcoholic drinks, whatever kind of drink, cappuccinos, all the goodness. And I really want to implement the idea of a raindrop challenge for whoever wants to try it. Say it's 20 bucks, you get three shots to put it within a certain range, and I'm 100% guaranteed that one in 100 people will actually be able to do it. It's gonna be sweet, and Michelle went with a blowpipe and is doing a large raindrop here. She's gotta stand up on the bench, so here we go now. That's a big boy, folks. Any pipe. She's going for extra length, she's letting it fall here. Look at that thing wiggle. Can we use the torch? It looks like honey. No, no torch. torch. You're no not going to need the torch. <laughs> Look at that thing go. Oh. Oh. That's some hot stuff. Ooh, baby. All right. All right. Here you go. So let's take a look here, folks. There it is. You actually heard the floor pop floor exploded because 2,000 degree glass. So you see the mark, but you also see the explosion right there of the floor. No big deal. We deal with this stuff every day. Yep. Into the clear bucket it goes. Any dirt or nastiness it would have picked up from laying there actually doesn't happen because it's just so hot it burns it away. I flipped it over like a pancake. It was smooth and buttery on the opposite side even though it's on this not so smooth, buttery, crazy cement floor. But what's happening to everybody out there today? It's been another week. Time is absolutely flying right now. And we've got the Ren Fair up this week. Chris has got a pretty big gather here. Going for a raindrop. One step, two step. He's got a nice hair attached to the bottom of this ball. Letting it wiggle now. Air. Here it comes. It's looking good. Uh oh. oh! The two hander. He put it up there. Look at that, folks. 
Now that is automatic disqualification, but if not, <laughs> that would have been an incredible raindrop. Man! <laughs> that is big time. Mm. Okay. Dang it. Marcy, do you want to hand me this camera? And I think it's your turn, right? All right, let's see it, folks. Introducing Marcy, folks. She went with the purple popsicle before the show. Feeling fresh, feeling cool. And it's not too bad today, honestly. It is a beautiful day here. It's starting to cool down. Marcy was saying it actually felt like it was 70 degrees outside today. Uh, it was pretty darn nice in here. We made bosom chillers, which we will show you over oh, here. Oh, man. Peak. So close. Look at that. That's a dangler. But no cigar. So let's see what Marcy's got. She did actually practice some of these this morning. I think we got about five or six in the annealer. So if I say anyone has a chance for this, it's got to be Marcy. She's up on the bench. She's whoa, swinging it. Whoa. She's flinging it. Casual, real casual, folks. I'm gonna watch myself here. Uh oh. Holy, holy, hey! Hey, that's pretty good. If it breaks and hits the floor, she's gonna be bumming. Somehow she did the full 360 spin. I thought we might take one to the head here, but it came out really good. She's got a winning raindrop right now. That's gonna be tough to beat, honestly. Right, you gotta lay it down on the floor here and we'll get a measurement. That is honestly pretty darn good, folks. And just like I was saying, she's warmed up. She had a great chance of winning here, going for her second all-time GA Cup win. Oh, yeah. And that is a beauty. That's a beauty. Nice job, Marcy. All right, let's get yeah. the measurement. Measurement. Should have saved our measurements from last time. She's looking at 36 inches. Dang. Same length as a yardstick, one yard. Yeah. Woo, -hoo -hoo, Ooh. baby. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, now right. we know whose turn it is now. Jayub. Jayub. The guy with no C in his name. Jayub. Goodness. All right, that was pretty good, 36 inches. That's, uh, that's longer than it takes to make a regular raindrop. So that was kind of what I was already shooting for. Now I got a blast yep, to check. Check it out, he's in there, guys, gathering it up. Nice molten gather. Looking good, looking good. He's got a little swagger. Drum roll, please. Oh, he's got the timing. There it goes. Woo, 36 inches. Is he going to get it? I don't know. It's pretty close. I don't know. It looks a little bit longer, folks. I can't compare from up here. We're going to have to take a gander. Oh boy. What the heck? <laughs> I gave it the one swing special. Like a mulligan. Can you buy a mulligan to get to try it again? If you got cash. Where's the tweezies? Oh, she's, she's got, got them. Uh oh. oh. Looks like we got ourselves wow. just about. That's pretty about darn close. Three to four inches. Check the ruler out. Let's get the true rule. So Jake's at 40 and a half. Woo. Let's get in there right on it. Oh yeah, 40 and a half. I'd say she's got 36 and a half. So that means I got four inches on her. All right. Marcy, that was pretty good, though. Making it happen around here. All right, so Jacob it. wins it. Marcy I'll raise comes the in, cup. runner up. So I'll just have to scribe my name on here for four in a row. You could call me taking the month of August, folks. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so sorry, Mike. Well, I'm going to have to start coming up with the competitions now. Oh. I see how that works. All right, well, we want to take a look at the table, and then we kind of already went over the board. You explained it to them. Yeah, we have well, no did, custom orders. Really. We got no custom orders tonight, which is great. We love we it. get to do whatever we want, and all those whatever we want are going to be for sale. They'll, you'll see them on the Anila Reveal on Thursday. Which we missed last week because as many of you know, and kind of around the world, but around here especially, there's been a lot of flooding, a lot of power outages. And we've had our power out for maybe the fourth or fifth time over this past month and uh, weren't able to do the Anila Reveal due to a power outage. So those pieces were put online, I believe. I think a couple of them are still available and uh, you could check them out. What, but what were they, mugs? We had a mug and a cactus. One oh, mug yeah, sold. that sweet iridescent cactus. Yep. Uh, when I get the mic, we'll talk about what's going forward. Beautiful. Should we just go over the table and then I'll hand it off to you? Yeah. All right, so that's the idea for tonight. So we got a warmer upper, then we got three or four artist choice and the giveaway. And for the featured product table tonight, folks, Michelle is going to be taking the uh, microphone and giving you guys all kinds of information about the upcoming months. Are one of our favorite products to produce. And here is kind of a sneak peek featured product display. We've already started. We've been making pumpkins for a month and a half now. And we chose our favorite pumpkins from the patch as a pre-order and a promotion for our upcoming uh, pumpkin season. So these are some of the top notch pumpkins we have in the gallery. These go live at 6.30 and we'll give you detailed looks of all of them, but they are, they do have individual pictures on the website at 6.30 when it goes live. I'm just gonna show them all real quick. How many are here, 12? 12 of them. There's number one. There's number two. Oh, number three is tasty. Number three is a big boy and it's got a beautiful copper ruby. Number four is right here. Number five is this little Cinderella special. Number six, we got the super flatty. Number seven, gourd. Number eight, a traditional with the Goldilocks curl. Number nine is the squatta. Looking real cool. Number 10, look at that, the special mold. I think that's the 24 rib. Maybe even the 32, but I'm thinking 24. We got number 11, a beautiful blue, and then we got number 12. So that's it, guys. All right, all right. Well, you got thumbs up from over here. Everything looked amazing. Great camera work. All right. All right, next steps. So while you guys get started, Marcy and I are going to go over to something cool. Yes, and we will get going last. Oh, which I forgot the ice. What a turn. Over here, we have our very unique product. Let's sit and have a chat. This, my friends, is called the Bosom Chiller. It's this dainty piece of glass, and I will go get some ice because I don't really fill it out of my cup. But you fill it with ice, and as women, you stick it in your bosom. And this is the silliest, funnest product. We made these 19 years ago now at the Renaissance. Well, I was trying to get the raindrops in there, but looks like my favorite one here just got a little shorter. Oh. Anyway. Does that mean I win? No. <laughs> yeah, right? All right, back to the bosom chillers. So the cool thing about the bosom chillers is women at the Renaissance get all dressed up in garb. Renaissance is a reenactment festival. I didn't know about them until I went to the one here. They're kind of all over the U.S. They're actually in Europe, too, but it's kind of a loose interpretation of the Renaissance. So Michigan people get dressed up and then they love their bosom chillers because every year it's a different color. Um, I also say this could be like a shot glass in the winter and then you put it on your windowsill and it's just really pretty. So because the festival's starting, we've had some customers have reached out to us. Um, again, people get them to match their outfits. They're very beautiful. And you stick them in your bosom and like this little knob at the bottom usually catches on some of your clothing so it holds in really well and if you have renaissance festivals near you you might want to check and see if people are wearing these i know at the michigan festival they're really popular 
But one of the reasons I had Marcy come over here and show you was against the white. We're gonna take some of the pumpkins here against the white too. You can really see the color. Because I know sometimes during the show it's a little hard to catch that pattern or see that the color that we're offering. So if you have questions, put them in the queue, put them in the chat box, let us know. Super cool. All right, back to the guys. And what is the warm up piece? What's that? What's the warm up piece? We're gonna make pumpkins. Okay, so I am gonna talk opposite of Chris. We're gonna try our mics a little different today so that if Jake needs to say something, he'll pop up next to Chris and say what's going on. And the real question is, do you think Jake can be silent? In four words or less, tell us, can Jake stay silent through the show? Maybe we could talk about how many boxes are in the bag. So on Friday's E! News, we asked the question, how many boxes were in here? And I believe it was Bridget, Marcy, I can't remember who packed them. Bridget. Did, yeah, Bridget packed them. And then we decided we wanted to pack in a little bit more. Uh, so there were some good guesses, like... Who was, what was the wildest guess? People were very conservative. You guys, I don't like that. Like No one said 50? No, oh, oh, yeah. There was like 8, 14. Those are big boxes. They weren't looking at this bag. No, they weren't. So I'm gonna unload on the table while you guys watch a pumpkin. All right. I'm doing something a little bit different, a little bit of a different for the warm-up piece. I'm gonna do a, a green core with opaque orange over the outside so that it has like this core, like it's a pumpkin that just grew and isn't quite ripe yet. It's a pretty cool process. I like trying to get multiple uh, layers of color in there. Would you call it a baby pumpkin? I would call it a... Premature? Uh, unripe? Unripe? <laughs> so doing a multiple layer uh, means I took one small gather, coated it with this green, now I'm gonna blow a tiny bubble in it let it cool off and I'm gonna gather crystal over it and coat that coating of crystal with orange, opaque orange, but only one layer of it so that the green creeps through. Okay, while Chris is blowing this, I wanna tell you guys, I told you to get your calendars out. And the reason I said this is October 10th, I want you to save that date. October 10th, it's a Sunday. From 11 to 4 p.m., something very special is going to happen. So you want to keep something that date. Something special, but top secret info, but get ready. Mm -hmm. October 10th. Are you sure it's not August 10th? Uh, let me see. I'll have to do the Superman move and fly around the Earth backwards <laughs> and go back in time. Oh, all right. It's October 10th. Yep, October 10th. Okay, so one thing I do want to point out about our pumpkins is that we're kind of known for our colors and our innovative styles. And also our pumpkins, let me go grab one. Because our pumpkins are all unique and one of a kind, this one is a really cool metallic color. And let's show it against the white. So it's kind of like this smoky gray color with reflection. Now imagine that in a dark room. See how the color changes with some candles glowing on your table while you're eating your pumpkin harvest food. Wouldn't that be like incredible? Incredible. Incredible, says the man who's going to be making them. All right, back to Chris. All right, I got that clear crystal coating. Now I'm going to put one decent coat of orange on the outside. Just enough so that it doesn't block the green. Here, I was just going to say, let's swap up. I'll do it in between. 
Well, as he's putting on the color, I was just going to say, whenever Marcy gets a chance to show off the mold lineup that we have over here, Chris is going to still be blowing this out, preparing it to go into the optic mold a little more. But you see, straight rib wise, we put out three size options. And then you got the pineapple mold, and that's just for aesthetic, folks. Now, that was a joke. We were making, uh, we made a custom set of recycle tulip glasses. And that was a really sweet pair of pieces that we made at the beginning of the day today, and was a custom order. Uh, didn't want it necessarily on the live show, and I said it was pumpkin night, so we were going to stick with pumpkins. But uh, in remembrance of her mother, who passed away this last year, who always drank the uh, CC and 7-Up, Canadian Club and 7-Up. They sat on their porch and uh, watched the uh, neighborhood gatherings and hung out together, and she's getting these this set in remembrance of her mother to do the same thing. And that's pretty cool. We love a story. Look at that. Some serious optics. Everyone, it sounds like in the comments that I was doing a really great job with keeping nice and quiet, so I appreciate everyone's support. <laughs> oh. Okay, how about a little blow? Good. Well, this move, he's holding it up in the air. He's letting it squat back on itself. His hand is covering the pipe so no air comes back through. Below lightly. All right, I'll take a bit. Right behind you here. Yeah. This is where we put the GA stamp on, guys. Every one of our pumpkins has a GA stamp right on the bottom. Color? All right, the GA stamp. I will tell you about our pumpkins. You want a pumpkin that Either has one. a GA stamp. Why? Because our pumpkins are completely original. We are one of the first businesses that started doing the pumpkins. And I have to check the math, but I think it's 20 some years. I can't remember. There's a company in California that did it one year before us. So I'll share an article that's really cool, Urban Glass and the Pumpkin Phenomena. Yep. So remember that when the pumpkins are hot, the color doesn't look like, Marcy? Come on over here, let's see the stem. The colors don't look like they really truly are. Any of the oranges are gonna look like this burnt red and not very pretty. This was the hardest thing for me to learn. When we were making pumpkins in a group, um, it took me quite a few days to figure out how to make the stem. And I shouldn't really say days, but here's an interesting tidbit. Chris is left-handed, and sometimes when he shows you how to do things, he does it left-handed, and I could not get my placement right, and I couldn't figure out why. And then I saw someone else doing it right-handed, and then I was like, oh, that's why. So he's got it down. He's pretty ambidextrous with both hands, so he's always made this look really easy. Uh, tucks in the stem. We're not one of those companies that makes the three minute pumpkin. We're the company that takes the time and does it right. So oh, that yeah. torch causes the iridescent stem to pop out. And so this annealer reveal, you're gonna wanna see. And so on that note, I'm gonna have Marcy, after it's tucked away, come with me Oh, that, I'm warmed up now. I know. Marcy, come with me a second while they get together their next one. So we've, we've come up with something new. Follow me. And some of you may know Christina. She does a lot of our signage. 
this weekend we were working on our new item. It's called the Future Annealer Reveal. So we're gonna make, check this out. You gotta love her signage. We're gonna turn this into an annealer reveal because we've got some upcoming, oh, it's probably hard with the light behind me. We've got some upcoming news. We are gonna go back to two shows a week and we're gonna start those when Renaissance starts. So next week, there are two shows a week. I'm not gonna tell you yet what the release date and time is on the Patreon show. Jake and Chris are gonna talk about it this Thursday. But next week, it will be in your e-news. You gotta open your e-news to find out the details. They'll be written in front of you and you'll remember. But the annealer reveal is gonna happen. Both shows is gonna have one annealer reveal over here. So it's gonna be super cool. Even Marcy's looking at me like, what's going on? That's why we're having a staff meeting next week. Okay. So they've seen the uh, annealer. We've talked about the second show and it will, they'll find out the details next week in their e-news. All right, you guys ready? We're ready. Who, who's doing this pumpkin? I do it. All right. I got an idea for one of my pumpkins, which no one's seen yet on the live feed. Uh-oh. I'm gonna take it to Tarantula Town. What? Put a spider on the pumpkin. Uh -oh. Then it transfers it from harvest season to Halloween season. Uh, 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 uh. That's right. Folks, the website is live. Before we get started, one quick pan back across the pumpkins we have already made. Uh, I know Chris already went through them. Obviously, that's my favorite, the ridiculous spiral. Love that color pattern. We just made an acorn based off that color pattern, custom acorn last week on the show. This guy's an insane brand new color pattern of this year. My favorite. Number Look at 10 this guy. absurd. Bing. <laughs> and uh, that's how it goes, folks. It's on the website. Raindrops are on the website. And I'm going to get it started here. Bosom's on the website. There is. Whoa. It's kind of personal. <laughs> I think considering the circumstances, I'm gonna have to do a layered one as well. Considering the circumstances? The circumstances of the pumpkin. My only question is, and the answer is yellow, because I've been told multiple times by both Bridget, who is our amazing sales representative here at the Glass Academy, and by my girlfriend, Christina, that yellow is a hot color, and people love yellow, and I'm gonna have to play into it. Is that something that's seasonal this year? Because if it is, Sticky Lolly should be making some yellow candies. That's true. But as long as they're not banana flavor, because I don't know too many people that like banana flavored candies, but if you do, put it in the chat, folks. I Here's... like banana flavored stuff. How about, Marcy, a quick zoom on the uh, ice packs underneath tech supports uh, <laughs> computer over here. That's how hot it is in here, folks. No joke. What about banana cream pie? Who likes banana cream pie out there? I do. I got a pretty good story about banana cream pie that... Uh, anyway, I'm going to go for the swirl here. The full-on swirl for the core. So the cool thing about this yellow is it's a size one, so it's larger chips of glass, which means when I go for the swirl move without the tweezers, all those individual spots are gonna look awesome. Compared to if it was like a super powdery color, you wouldn't see the swirl effect as much. How exactly would that grow in the patch? What could make it swirled like that? Radiation. Radiation? I think that's what does it. I was thinking maybe if the pumpkin was going over the fence, over the wire fencing, got caught at the top, and as it was Curled. growing, it spun going down, and then you'd have this crazy vortex pumpkin. 
That sounds possible. It sounds a little nicer than radiation. It does, it does. But, you know, <laughs> a lot of spaceships land in uh, cornfields and pumpkin patches, so isn't that where the Great Pumpkin came from? The Great Pumpkin. Can we make a spaceship on the pumpkin show? We might have to. Oh, she's writing it down. Notepad's coming out. What about a rocket ship? Rocket ship, sure. I, I'm doing a spider on my on the piece right now after this. Here comes the bubble now, folks. And notice how that yellow is looking really orange right now because it's so hot. There's our bubble. Blown through my thumb. So you blew through your thumb? I was going to say, we're going to have to get into Renaissance mode and start showing people the hole in the thumb and explaining the surgery that you get uh, to, to do that process in glass. I don't mode. even think Marcy knows about the surgery because she hasn't got far enough along to get scheduled for one. We do have to get that on the schedule. Oh, she knows the surgery, she said. <laughs> she already you got, got it. it <laughs> all right, all hey, right. That was a qualification when we put the job listing out. The question, we haven't even got, honey, we got plenty of time. We do have a giveaway question, folks. A way to win free glass if you're not interested in purchasing one of these amazing pumpkins on the table today, which there go two of them. There go three of them. So you're going for another gather over this one, Jake? That's right. So you're making a hoog, a hoog pumpkin? Just a medium or so. I think a medium is pretty hoog. Look at the swirl. But anyway, the giveaway question is right here, folks. This week, we're giving away this cup we made. Chris made on last week's show. I'll the hand model it. Iridescent <laughs> spaghetti bling bling. Yeah. I don't know if anyone out oh, there is old enough to remember the Benny Hill show when Benny Hill was doing the hand modeling for a soap commercial. And he put his hand out and it had like tattoos and dirt all over it and everything. It was funny. But this is the winner right here, a super spaghetti bit. And we talked about why it's called a spaghetti bit because it looks like spaghetti on it. Yes, hand model that, would you? Be careful now. Jojo. <laughs> so that's it, you guys. What makes our pumpkin special? And what is your favorite thing about our pumpkins? What make them special? You send that answer to that question with your name to enews at glassacademy.com and you'll get in, entered in the win next week's drawing. But tonight we're gonna find out when we do the wheel of names who won this from last week. Yeah, we ask these questions because we want your folks input on our pumpkins so come on well, let us know i got a clear layer on top of here and then i just went and put some large chunks of iridescent gold brown which will be the same as the stem color only on the bottom half so it's going to be fading up and you can start to see that happen as it cools down the marble right now into just clear and yellow I'm just shaping it up for the mold here. I want it extra soupy, all the soup that I can handle uh, to now, go into this mold. Is it really soupy or is it buttery? I don't know. That's a pretty tough question. I thought it was buttery. I think we got to leave that one up to the, uh, to the comment section. When the glass is molten and creamy and super, super juicy, it's buttery. No, it's soup. Stripping all over the place. I don't know anything about forbidden honey. I just know <laughs> that buttery. All I know is I'm dealing with soup on the end of the pipe and I'm going into the optic mold for some serious pumpkin ribs. Oh, baby. A lot of noise coming from the background now. That was a lot of air you put into that, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Almost lost a lip. <laughs> a 
It's real tough to make pumpkins by yourself, you guys. It's real tough to blow glass by yourself. Boat. Keep it coming. Good. It's a big boy. It's hoog. Blow. Like the wind. Good. I'm glad I cooled this pipe down. Look at all the leverage I got working it up near the pumpkin. If it weren't for that, I might be bumming. Did that just rhyme? I think it did. I think I was just rhyming on the show. All right. Chicks, right. yep. panicking Thank a minute. You. The glory Same holes, move as tight. Chris did here, holding it up, letting it squat, holding the air in there. You know, I think glass blowers might be good dancers when I watch this. Yes. What do you guys think? Is Jake a good dancer? I know I am. Nobody's seen me in the club. Oh, but we might get to see Marcy in the club. What? Folks, Marcy, could you get a zoom on the color on the top of this right now while I'm in the hole? Look at that spiral. Are you getting sleepy? Getting sleepy. Oh. All right, so this is that little GA stamp. Again, this is our signature. You can uh, flip over the pumpkins and see our GA signature. For the core, yeah. Hey, here's a story Gold for brown, you. please. Years ago, we had someone come to one of our pumpkin shows. We do some outdoor pumpkin shows. And she came and said, yep. these are lovely, but you know, there's pumpkins in my hometown or, or whatever. Why would I want one of these? But she stayed and watched the demos and we always have contests. So she filled out the contest slips and holler when you need a door. She filled out the contest slips. We don't remember who does what. We pulled her name, called her, and she won a pumpkin, shipped it down to her and she opened the box and called us back and told us it was the best pumpkin she had ever had. She thought our pumpkins were like everyone else. But our design and our technique okay. and the color was so strong, she couldn't believe it, next to the other pumpkins that she had bought forever. So that's kind of how we get lifelong fans. It's these people that show up, they pay attention to the yep. details. And this stem is one of the fanciest details. So you notice Jake took three reheats to get that color right. On this particular piece right here, you know how in a pumpkin patch, sometimes the colors change the way the pumpkins grow? So this one, he put the color on the bottom. And there goes Chris with his left-handed yeah. awesome technique. Ooh. Remember that contest we had, how many curls? So now, Chris, there are two colors in the stem. And you notice it takes a little bit of teamwork. You want to make sure the stem lands just right. And one of the reasons I took the mic for this, too, is because you're concentrating so hard on making that pumpkin right that it's not That's so a easy. hottie. Now here's a little finishing detail. Jake's going to make sure the stem is really, really attached to that pumpkin. Uh, if you make the stems too fast, you don't take this extra time to reheat and, and push them down and attach them then that's one of the easiest places the pumpkin will break. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, how can you ship that to me in one piece? And I say, we right? right the master shippers. So ship these pumpkins, we have tons of experience. You put them in a box with shred and a little note that says they're all handmade. Looking good. Blingin'. And then they get an outside box on top of that. So they're 100% guaranteed. If for some reason it was to show nice. it broken, no worries. We'll figure it out. Right. Spiral is sweet. Ooh. Really Looking nice. Good. Looking good. Super good. All right. Pumpkins are definitely a team effort, folks. And as Marcy's learned getting into the shop here, and we're making pumpkins all day, it's a 50-50 split. I can blow up a beautiful pumpkin. If she doesn't bring a beautiful stem, the pumpkin's a wash and vice versa. So uh, it's nice working with Chris. We all know what we're doing here. Marcy's a great stem bringer too. And 
once you get things in line, it feels good. But uh, pumpkins are not as easy as we just made them look, that's for sure. No. And they, they have years of experience. I was going to talk about one of the things, what makes our pumpkin special? That's the question for today. You send it to E! News at Glass Academy. But here's one that is, I know, Jake's favorite. It's that metallic blue color. And then this was also done in a 20-point mold. So this has more points to it. 32-point mold with a gold iridescent handle. So we change up. We don't want to make the same things over and over. We're not McDonald's. We're not Burger King. We want to make unique pumpkins that are very much one of a kind. So this was number 10. Okay. All right. So tell us what makes your favorite pumpkin. Uh, I will show you another feature I think is really cool. You see that deep red? So that again is if you have like tea lights by the table, but if you don't, maybe it shows up again. See how my blue picks up these spots? So you, if this was your table covering and you had that with some lights, just imagine how beautiful that pumpkin would be. That is a great combo. Right? So half the fun of our pumpkin, dis, or our pumpkin putting them out is displays. I know a lot of people do, let's walk over to the whiteboard. They'll show their pictures of pumpkins on the website, very basic. And I just don't think there's a lot of pumpkin love in that. So if we put some fabric down, like how would you decorate in your house? You're certainly not gonna set it on a white tablecloth. You're gonna spend a little time maybe going and getting some pine needles from outdoors um, and showing the love. All right, back to the action. Back to the action. All right. Guys, we're gonna be doing one now, a traditional orange, and I'm gonna put a black spider on it. So basically the way that black spider is gonna be is gonna be, uh, Pretty nice. I'm gonna make the pumpkin and I'm gonna give it to you, Jake, to hold on to. Then I'm gonna make the body the, uh, of the spider and have you, then we'll trade up and you'll heat the body up, we'll put the body on, and then you'll bring me the bits for the legs. I'll get two legs off of each bit Stick it on, cut it, make two legs out of them, just like that. And then we'll do one there, two there, two there, two there, two there, because we all know that spiders have eight legs. That's, That's it. That's right. So there we go. And even if we're not in a hurry, you want to kind of just run around a little bit. <laughs> like that guy who used to own the auto shop on Schitt's Creek, the, the series. I can't remember his name, but he owned I the auto shop, and he would always run into the scene every time. He'd just be like, like I he ran. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, here we go. So this dates back to pumpkin time last year. We were doing shows. If I had to guess, it'd probably be on like show 35 or 40 or so. Um, and that was still very early in the live streaming process. We're up to 124 here. We've got a huge following and we love everyone for their support and uh, supporting in what we do as artists, but uh, supporting the business, keeping our lives afloat, employing other people in the local area or from Chicago. Um, but this kind of brings it all for full cycle here, folks. And we are back into pumpkin land. I was gonna say the whole point of all of that was that I would let Marcy, I, would, I was ready to take the camera, but the, uh, the spider, she's never done before. She said, how do you do that? And this is something that once she sees it one time, she'll completely understand the way the bits are run, but it's something that uh, is pretty precise, pretty, pretty delicatoso. So there we go. So I think I saw him put a little bit of the cobalt blue, folks. Do you know what makes cobalt blue, everybody, in the comments? I think it has to do with uh, Blue Crayola crayons. Crayola. You guys, you guys know that company. Ah, yes, everybody. So since this pumpkin itself is gonna be more of a Halloween pumpkin, I figured I'd put a little bit of blue inside of there so it has that black light kind of bling craziness to it. So hopefully that that uh, blue will creep out in between the cracks. 
and we'll be able to see it real nice and it'll look kind of mysterious and hauntingly. In a brief check of the comments, I see Nicole said copper makes what? cobalt blue. And that's false actually because copper makes copper blue, so you were 90% correct, but cobalt makes cobalt blue. There it is, folks. So he's going in for gather number two here. He's going big with this one as well. We've also got to be aware, and I realized when I was making my large one here, that we only have a limited amount of annealer space. So we got to be conscious of what the options are here. Oh yeah, we're looking good. Solid layer of orange on top. Orange is one of the stiffest colors, folks. And uh, you may have already knew that if you're a Glass Academy addict and you watch the shows and you discuss on the Glass Academy addict's Facebook page all about glass blowing, uh, and you've heard us talk about it, orange is the most stiff color in glass blowing, meaning it takes the most heat to melt it down and get it malleable. So that's why when it gets to pumpkin season, you really do have to have uh, some talent and some thinking ahead on the color pattern when you go into Pumpkinville because they do take more heat. You got to do things precise, you got to do them quick, and the most important thing is getting that neckline in there. It may seem like we're just squeezing a line, but there's three or four different things that are happening in our brains as you're putting a neckline into a pumpkin. You're shaping the pumpkin without touching it. Folks, in the brief moment I can look at the camera here in between uh, when I'm needed, let me know how everybody's doing. Seems like uh, time is flying and we're doing a show every other day, but we may also have some exciting news for you on that front going forward. So keep your eyes and ears peeled and or open. I'm talking uh, about... What, Jake? I'm talking about live streaming activity. Nice. We've already released our October 10th date for our exclusive pumpkin show, where there's gonna be a totally one of a kind and unrepeated uh, color patterns and styles. But we also may have more news for you here coming up that we may or may not give away, which oh, yeah. we may we not. Got, we got all kinds of stuff. I just wanted to come say welcome to the club. We got Cheryl, she's a new customer. Cheryl. That just bought that Tim Burton pumpkin. And nice. She, yeah. Awesome. And I also wanted to say, those of you who have multiple orders and you get a pen, do you share your pens? Do you spread the love? Do you give away those pens to your friend and family and say, hey, watch this cool show? If we were millionaires, maybe we can implement a micro pen following chip. Well, no, that just sounds kind of weird now. But maybe we could send maybe we could send a pumpkin up on the space shuttle. Yeah, to Mars. Pumpkin to outer space. Okay, blue. Slow. Keep going. Good. You see, we've switched to the large jacks at this point. I love the smaller the tool, the more detailed and precise the cut line you could get, but you just can't have your hand as close as those small jacks put your hand to the actual glass. It will burn you in a minute. Thank you, Marcy. You need to have that extra length away from the piece. The email address is enews Hello? at glassacademy.com. Keep going. Good. That's where you send your answers to the giveaway question where we do a drawing every show and we'll most, uh, most most definitely be making a pumpkin for this week's giveaway. You ready for it or you need a second? Uh, just one second to let this drop back ahead. All right, all right. I'll just get one more catch up on the old uh, comment section. Nothing. Carrie, what's happening? 
Ruby pumpkin night. That sounds like a beautiful idea. We just ordered up a bunch more of that exact color because it's so popular. All right, I'm ready for a Ready bit. for it. We're going to put the, the stamp on the bottom first. Then we'll put the spider on. You got it. Marcy, did you get a look at those boxes on the table? Because after uh, I see all this, I think people might be switching up their gas. You better take another gas, yeah. Coming up on spider time, we got a pit stop, fresh ice pack coming in hot for you, Jacob. One pumpkin for me here. So I'm keeping this thing warm and all the heating is totally different on a larger piece. It's different than if I was just heating up a goblet. You gotta just think about it, feel the way it's moving and you gotta mentally just have a ticker going in there all the time. I gotta think about the color that we have, especially the thickness. And when you don't make a pumpkin, you don't actually know where the thickness is distributed. But just by weight, I could say it feels a little thicker up on the shoulder, which is really nice. going for the iridescent black for this uh, black widow spider. Coming in here? I'm gonna take a seat and then I'll, uh, you can switch it up with me. So now he's using the small jacks for the precision. He's making the body, that's the abdomen, and that's the buttocks. Oh, I'm sorry, what's the technical term? I know there's a technical term, but I don't know what it is. The, uh, what is it? Whoa. Really? She knows, folks. Oh, ask the chat. Google it, folks, like, That's Google not it. the name of it. What is the name of uh, the spider's rear. Yeah, it's called like the, the silk sack. Nah. Ready for it? Yep. Stay. I've got word here from tech support that on the Glass Academy Addicts Facebook page is a picture of the spider pumpkin we did last year. And that page is a Facebook page run by our fans, Two Eyeballs. Look at that. Nice. That's a uh, free and open public Facebook page. Actually, it's private. You've got to answer what question uh, purple is in the glass world. Perk. Take those bits, the legs. And you can join and you can talk about the glass we do here at the Glass Academy. It sounds like they got a picture of last year's spider pumpkin on there. Riker is a top fan of ours, folks. That's good enough size? Yeah. Marble it off, and I'll probably take two bits off of that. Oh, he's starting to get blingy, blingy. I like it, folks. Marber and then a heater, you want us wanting after the marble. I'll just take it. Yeah. So he snips one. This one might be a cool one to check out from over here. He's taking one bit and then he snips it in half and sticks down each individual hairy leg and then pops up each kneecap. 
And you know it's hairy because it's a spider. Even glass spiders have hair on their legs. Yep. Looks like grandma's calling while you're making the pumpkin here. She wants it. <laughs> that might be it. Nice. Two more legs. Tight fit in here, folks. But you want to squeeze as much as you can because as soon as you start opening up the doors, you lose that core true heat inside the uh, reheating chamber here. So that's why we're finessing it in and out. This thing is blinging. High stepping too. Those tarantulas, man. He's looking at someone, staring them down. They get big. everybody watching from today we just talked about I talked about the glass Academy addicts that's pretty cool how it brings people together from all over the world uh, on a similar topic no political no positive or negative at all it's just good artistry and good discussions and we watch what goes on in there and I love commenting and seeing where pieces end up especially if people take uh, some nice pictures of them on their mantle or wherever they use their product it's really cool to see, but we love to hear where people are watching from because I think last week we had some people from New Zealand, I believe. Oh, recently yeah. just went into South like Africa. A, South Africa. Uh, I don't know, all over the world. And it's really cool to see. Some of the names that pop up are really cool. You can tell they're not from around here. What's that? Oh boy. Netherlands. Check them out. Look at this guy. Please. So you're going to get a reduction and I'll get the stem started up? You got it. Color? Uh, I think iris. What about a black stem? All right. You got black over there? No, I'll grab it. Black in the core? Delivery. Thank you, Marcy. Nope, black. I'm ready. I don't even know if uh, I've ever done a black stem before. This thing's gonna be sweet. Just waiting for the right timing so I can get this stem from Jake. Got some juice here. I'm gonna be dropping in the mold right meow. I'm going for my last flash. Okay. Black is one of the softest colors, so I'm going to need to control this thing here. Here we are. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Let's give it. Keep going, baby. Keep on going. Nice. The full curl, folks. The full curl. He's working it. Beautiful. The finishing of the stem, in my opinion, is one of the most important parts of the pumpkin. Curling down that last cue, sending it around that stem. It's a beautiful process, and you're on a serious schedule. And even though he went for a pretty large pumpkin here, I think it's bigger than the one I made, 
He made it taller, so it's taking up less space than mine is actually. I'm gonna burn it a little bit. Give me one sec. In the annealer. Oh yeah. And we get this thing out of here, folks. Bright orange. Nice. All right, Spidey Town. Pretty nice, sweet. Woo! All right. I like it. That was a nice one. I like making those. Kind of spooky. Well, I'll get some pipes up here and we can maybe take a look at the table. Yeah, come on over. Let's see what's left at the table, guys. I'm going to take a quick swig. That is one big uh, swig. Oh, yeah, Mercy's pointing. Why don't you cam the table, Mercy? Why don't we talk about the boxes? Was this the competition that what had happened about how many boxes were inside that sweet bag, the Glass Academy tote? I mean, you can take this grocery shopping and like walk out with a ton of stuff in one bag. Or to the market. Yeah. Go to the market. We have yoga. those. We could what? You could put your two yoga mats in here. Oh yeah, yoga. I thought you said Yoda, and I was like, <laughs> uh-oh, Star Wars. How do I relate Yoda. to that? I don't know what to say. All right, so we did the contest. I use that for my hockey bag, guys. Not that big. <laughs> All right. All right, so we kind of tricked you because we like having fun. So you can see there's lots of little boxes inside. The actual answer was, do you know? I'm gonna tell you, give me 30 seconds. No, 33. 33? Yeah. Well, I guess 30 seconds, that was close. All right. 33 was that magic number. So those things are for sale on the website? Yes. Did they come with the free button? No. Oh, uh, what? Sorry. <laughs> all right, all right. No free pins. You guys, we, do we get to talk about the bosom chillers? Yeah. Or the one thing we haven't shown off is really the traditional orange pumpkin here with a brown stem. Amber, deep amber. Deep amber, you don't see that often. We put a lot of iridescence into our stems, but this guy is something different. It's pretty darn light too, it's really nice. And a little matte finish on the orange, you got the stamp. But look at that stem, I mean, that's top notch, deep amber, and look at the webbing, the webbing here. I thought you said the red wing the webbing. Red webbing. <laughs> what I like about this one, sorry to say, my feel, is that it looks like, and Jake, you must have made this, but it looks like it's like got life to it. It's like, that's one of the things we've had other people helping us in the shop making pumpkins. It's so important to make sure that you keep that pressure in there when you stamp it on there so that it bulges out and has life to it. See how those things are just pushing out? This thing is such a nice looking pumpkin. It looks like a real pumpkin that came you out of the pumpkin wanna patch. You just want to hold it. You I know. I want to pop like the goo out and get some seeds. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that is a beauty. But I don't know. This guy's still here. This is That was the yellow one. This we made is that the like yellow, three weeks man. Ago. This thing has kind of got a little purple to it. It's a little Joker style. Yeah. It's real nice. And this one is actually the only one on the table here that's uh, a layered piece. It's very similar to the one we did earlier, Chris did, Opaline. with the uh, beautiful Opaline. I think that's the vanilla we call it. Yeah, vanilla Opaline. Tell me that doesn't make you want to have some cookies. <laughs> And then the beautiful iridescent stem, too. It might even smell too. like I mean, vanilla geez. flavored. Mm. It actually did kind of burn off, and it smelled kind of vanilla one time. Did really? it? Yeah. We were that's when, oh, this is number what? What number that's was five, this That's five. That's oh. five. Almost got it mixed up, guys. Well, confirmed by Marcy. That is a vanilla named vanilla smelling <laughs> vanilla pumpkin. opaline. All right. Nice. All right. Well, time for another pumpkin. Yeah, it's my turn. Yep. I think uh, you want to switch it up. You want to grab the camera. Marcy and I will make one yeah, here. Yeah, I'd love to. All right, guys. I'm on the mic camera. Boom. Boom. Ba -da -ba. Here she is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Marcy. That's it, you guys. You know the question right there. She's got it up. What makes our pumpkin special, and what is your favorite thing about our pumpkins? And you send that answer to enews at glassacademy.com for all you new newbies. And I think everybody else must have enews at glassacademy.com, our regulars, on auto speed pump. Well, they answer from the e 
Well, I'm just saying they answer it so Man, that oh. they get a chance to win. Because we love giving away free glass, you guys, right there. E-news at glassacademy.com every week for 124 weeks. We've been doing the show, and we've given away 124 pieces of glass to you guys, our followers, our fans, and our good friends. We love it. A quick little over-the-top pan of the studio for everybody who's new around here. That's the gallery right there. Sooner or later tonight, we're going to be doing the Wheel of Names. The Wheel of Names. Last week, we made, I made the spaghetti bit silver blue pimp and tumbler to, for the giveaway piece. And we got 128, you said? 125 people who sent in emails. So that's a pretty good chance. If you compare it to like the super lotto it's a good chance wouldn't you say yeah to win a handmade tumbler worth 72 bucks yeah hold on a second Jake. just stand silver when i show off your hat look down a little bit just want to put it out there to uh kelly and anyone else who has another team in their mind there you go we're gonna have an amazing team this year we got a new goalie the red wings are gonna tear it up it's true it's time stevie eiserman is doing his job it's true folks yep so Let's go. Jake and I, we're doing pretty well in hockey. We won our, our, what's it, our first game, and that was our second game, and we just won it. We mercyed him. I think so. Nine to one. Yeah. Yep, and then we got to scrimmage for the rest of the second half of the game or the third period because the game was over after we mercyed him. But we did pretty darn well, guys. We're doing good. We got a good team. And uh, it's a good time. Yeah. But here's the plan for mine. I want to do some Van Gogh action, but I want to gather over it again, too, and have clear on the outside. So it's not having a ton of texture on the outside of the pumpkin. It's still got that super glassy and metallic and magnified Van Gogh look. And if nobody knows what the Van Gogh is, then I you guess guys, we can the Van Gogh pumpkins are something that we are famous for here at the Glass Academy. We do a lot of product that has the Van Gogh color, and it originated from the Van Gogh Starry Night picture, and we decided that a long time ago, and we've done a lot of really specific uh, Van Gogh particular custom items, but the Van Gogh pumpkins along with Van Gogh awesome. mugs, Van Gogh chicks, Van Gogh all kinds of crazy stuff. And it was from when Michelle worked at Greenfield Village now presently called the Henry Ford, that amazing place that's right here in Dearborn, Michigan. She was making paperweights and started calling them Van Gogh paperweights. And it was pretty sweet. And I was out at a, cert a secret location and found one of her paperweights up on a windowsill what? from like 25 years ago. And I have it. That's right. Priceless, priceless. There was a little tiny man sitting next to it, too. Do you remember him? I don't know. I think he's still around. Oh, Buster got broken? <laughs> All right. You guys, I don't know if we were telling you. Jake's got some action going on over here, but the Renaissance Festival is coming up. And those just happen to be a couple girls with their bosoms full of bodice chillers. But uh, it starts this weekend, and it runs for the next seven weekends, all the way through the first weekend in October. The last weekend of the fair is October 2nd and 3rd. But it starts this weekend, August 21st and 22nd, and we are going to be out there, Jake and I, getting crazy. I'm trying to talk some people into doing a, a Renaissance show a special show for you guys. We might do it. If it happens, we we'll let you know. We want to do it, but I was sleeping in my bed thinking about it the other day and how we get Wi-Fi out there and how we get the whole setup out there. Yeah, so we might film. It may not be live, but we will be doing some. Well, if we can get the reception and they got some giant cell tower that's going to give us the deal, we'll try it. But if it doesn't work, we'll record it, and that'll be it. It'll still be just as crazy because we can't control ourselves out there. Just can't control ourselves. Well, like Michelle said, if you're deciding to take a trip to get out of Dodge, 
if you live in Dodge City, but if you live anywhere else, you can uh, travel to Michigan, to Detroit. We're only 10 minutes from Metro Airport, and you can come check out the Glass Academy and check out the Michigan Renaissance Festival and check out the Henry Ford and get some Middle Eastern food and check out the Jim Henson Muppets giant show that's at uh, the Henry Ford right now. And you could go downtown and do the river walk on the Detroit River and Ooh. have a custom pumpkin made and okay you're hurting my ears <laughs> see marcy in person <laughs> here Ooh, comes the van go actually go i put like 25 layers of color on because i'm not messing around i'm not on this show to mess around here i think i already had a few people asking me questions i looked on my phone they said is that a Maurice that's on the bottom of the pumpkin? <laughs> or is it called something else when you add it on the side of a pumpkin? So that person was probably somebody who may have blown glass before. But there might be, sometimes we've always got Could glass, glass blowers watching our addict. show, why not? The thing about glass blowing, you guys, is that if you're a glass blower and you're trying to blow glass, you're in love with the glass. And it's a, an addictive thing and even Michelle and I have been blowing glass for a long time and I still like watching glass blowing videos of other people blowing glass because everybody everywhere does things different. I mean, the West Coast, people blow glass differently than the Midwest. People blow glass better than, I mean, not better, different than the East Coast, you know? And everybody learns different techniques and it's super cool to check it out. Hey, I think I've got a good challenge for next week. It would be fun to pick three colors or four colors, and we all make a piece using those four colors. And people would see the range of how different things are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if it was just a beverage glass, someone might put it in the optic mold, someone might do Van Gogh, but having the same colors. That's right. That's interesting. I like that. I like that. Tech support's mind Locking. is always moving. What about some ideas for the challenge? You guys could throw some ideas at us about the challenge because... Yeah, let's see that in the comment section. For a long time, we used to just do, remember this, will it burn? So, will it burn was pretty cool. We would burn all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff out there. All right, Jake's got a Van Gogh situation going on here. And it's really important. I'm gonna explain something that's very important, guys. When you've got a whole bunch of colors and you've got frits and powders and all kinds of other things, you have to use the Marver. And the Marver is this one inch steel plate here, giant steel plate, weighs about 800 pounds. And you have to roll the glass on that to cool the surface of the glass and to cool the color. So it's got an equal temperature. So when you blow it out, it blows out evenly. If you didn't marver it and you just came out and blew it, it would blow through the blues and the greens before it blew through the oranges and yellows because those orange and yellows and reds are really stiff. So you see them rolling on the marver. It's importantly shaping it, preparing it for the mold, but it's more importantly chilling it so that the bubble blows out symmetrical. For a long time, people were blowing glass in America using a paper, a wet newspaper, and that works but it doesn't work as good as the Marver because the, the newspaper doesn't chill the surface of the glass as extremely quickly as the Marver does. So, I mean, you could have a bubble that's blowing out completely crooked and it's just like frustrating the heck out of you, but all you need to do is Marver it over and over and over again and it'll blow out perfectly symmetrical. The Marver saves bubbles. Yes, the bubble saving metal. So the one thing I know here, I spent all that time, I lost my core heat. And when I just blew that bubble in there, it's pretty thick on the bottom and pretty thin up top. So I'm gonna have to be very aware of that when I go into the optic mold and when I'm blowing it out and shaping the pumpkin. I need to uh, shape according to that. I'm gonna do the zoom for a second. Don't turn it for one minute, Jake. Right there, look at that, guys. And before I gather over it, I'm going to reduce it because I got a lot of iridescence right up in there. There's a huge trail of iridescence. I love it. All kinds of action. All right, I got another tech another support tech in the house. Support. 
So some of you may or may not know I'm taking a course and this is like being in college again. It's really fun. It's on Zoom and so I sit and listen to all these things with other business owners and I found a new company that has swag. So we can get some of our favorite comments and action. ideas put on a coffee mug and it's like made to order so I don't have to invest in like 2,000 coffee mugs from China. We can just get them printed to order. So you can get your favorite sayings but I want to know what you guys want. Do you like coffee mugs? Do you like water bottles? It's kind of cool. So we can put the gathering point on a coffee mug. I would drink from that. Yeah. Um, so where we get our t-shirts, we're also going to switch it to this company. So what would you like to see swag? What types of swag would you like to see? I think hats are a must. Oh, look at, don't move. Look at the swirls. I'm right in on it. And it looks good. So you're gathering over it now. Yep. That's going to look really cool being gathered over, Jake. All right, we're going to make it look like we're going into a tropical situation here, folks. We're going to be filming Jake through the tropical forest. Yeah. All right, Marcy, would is. you mind cooling me down here? I'm hiding behind the bush. Jake's taking a molten gather. Marcy's checking me out through the bush. It's good, it's good. What do we got down here? We got all kinds of cool little sprouts growing out of the crucible. All right, Jake's using the pipe cooler, guys. The pipe, especially when it's hot in here, check it out. It's hot in here and the pipe gets really hot when you're in the furnace, so he's cooling it down so he can choke up on it because that glass is really heavy when it's four feet out in front of you. So if he's able to get his hands up closer to the end of the pipe, it makes it a lot easier and when you're blowing glass all day, you want to have the most leverage when you're working the glass. And Jake's really good at making sure that uh, he handles the glass correctly because he's preserving his body. You can wear yourself out really quickly blowing glass. It's a very physical demanding thing. Keeps you healthy, but it also works on you. So you got to be smart about it. She's already lost weight, she says. Woohoo! That'll do it to you. Big time. Just burns it off. So I'm remembering where that thickness was and shaping it up according to that right now. Nice. And I need to make sure the core gets nice and hot. I'm going to take two or three deep heats on it because the core was just ice cold so I could get the glass on there without losing color into the furnace. So now I'm focusing on bringing it back up to temperature, having equal heat throughout the whole thing so I can blow it out into an equal sphere and because of our annealer space I'm going to try and go taller like Chris did with it rather than wider. I like it. Using that marver making sure he's doing what he's doing right. Getting it ready prepared he's blowing into it boom. Seeing where that air is now. Trying to get a little more of that thickness blown out on the bottom. Oh yeah. If you're gonna go into the mold, you know what you gotta have, guys, right? Look right up here. You gotta have it hot. Yeah, Lucy's gone, everybody. We miss her already. She left, she flew back to New York on Friday. Folks, this is uh, a great example why we charge a hair more for our Van Gogh pumpkins because pumpkins are a very difficult thing to make technique-wise, but from a viewer's perspective, they're kind of on the fast side. So when we do a Van Gogh, you can notice compared to, I mean, this is probably the length of the spider pumpkin that we just did. And so to add, uh, just have a different color pattern, it's a whole nother ballpark of work. Yeah, he's absolutely correct. And here we go. Oh, yeah. Real yes. nice. Very nice. So I'm going to get some heat and I'm going to start letting it hang. I'm not heating it all the way because I know the top is thinner because it blew out wider. 
So if I heat the whole thing up and start swinging it, it's all gonna just pull out in the thin spot and it won't be nice. I like, I like how Jake's describing that to you guys because that's exactly what's gonna happen. You need to know exactly what's going on. Look at how he's using gravity, a little centrifugal force. You making a Frankie? Making something tall. We're gonna see how she starts to go here. I like the Frankies. Low. Good. Thank you, Blow. Mmm, looking good. good. I'm doing all right. You can take it. It's good. I'm going to take one more heat on it. I call them Frankies, the tall ones. I, I like carving those when you get them out of the pumpkin patch, and I call them Frankies because it kind of looks like Frankenstein's head. So look at all that color I put on there, and it's still a little transparent. And color is what makes glass extra expensive, so. That's uh, really flow. nice. Keep it coming. Good. Now I want to get that squished in on the top. So I'm going to heat the whole thing up, hold it in the air like we do. Like we do. All the heat's right on the neck here, holding it so it doesn't lose its air. Getting some sweat on the mouthpiece here. Gravity is one of the most important tools with glass blowing, folks. You don't realize the slightest angle of the glass, pointing it down or holding it up, makes such a huge difference. So many beginning glass blowers gather up the glass and they want to look at it while they've got it on the end of the pipe. So Gold they brown. hold it up and it just keeps running back onto the blowpipe. And you always have to say, besides having to say the main thing, which is, you guys, you need to have the glass hot. The other thing you say is, you have to keep the glass off the blowpipe. Because everything on the blowpipe gets scrapped. And all that scrap goes into our recycled glass tank. Well, I'm going to remind Chris, because this is the part where Jake needs to concentrate. The, um, when we were taught, our, one of the maestros that taught us, his name was Nino Taglia Pietra. And uh, he's 87. He just formally announced his retirement just a bit ago. And one of the things Lino would say when we were making glass with him, at this particular time, he was making goblets. And he said, whatever you take the glass from the furnace, one third stays on the pipe, one third is your piece, and one third will be waste. So I think in the American culture, the way I was taught at a historic place, you used all the glass on your pipe. It was revolutionary to hear, what do you mean? You like cut glass off? You like drip a gather? Like all these different things that we had never been exposed to. But in Italy, this was their tradition. This is what they did. Lino started blowing glass when he was 12. So working in those hot shops, he, was, he really learned a lot of things. And when he came over to America, he taught us a bunch. So this is Marcy's doing the, not the handle, but it is kind of like a handle, it's the stuff. This is the stem, folks. And she's making it and she's doing a nice job marvering it. Same thing. Going in to get a little bit more heat in there. That's hot, 2,150 degrees. We work our glass pretty darn hot. That thumb popped up perfectly in the right spot. Nice job, Marcy. So she's going into the optic mold that is going to be the stem of the pumpkin. All right, going for a little your... flash, and now we're going over to see the pumpkin action. This is the favorite part. Chris is zooming in. He's got it right on there. Look at that. So how do you know a good stem? It's how it pulls out. Fast mercy. And they wrap it around before it loses its heat. Ooh, so I, look I at like that. Because they're all different. Nice. When you go to the pumpkin patch, 
every pumpkin you see, you know how you go there. I mean, here in Michigan, I'm assuming everyone goes to the pumpkin patch in the fall. You go, you pick out your favorite pumpkin, you think it's that one, and then you walk further in the field and you find a different one, and you're like, that's That is one beautiful Van Gogh Frankie pumpkin. Jake's getting the stem down totally right. Marcy's ready with the pipe. Now that pipe is preheated that she's got in her hand. And it, it slides in the stem. If it wasn't reheated, when she would slide that metal rod in there, that All right. metal rod would actually crack the stem. Woo! Looking good. Getting a little bit of that iridescence up on there. And now into the annealing oven. All right, all right. Nice job, guys. Takes two, takes two to tango, and you guys just did a nice dance. <laughs> looking good, looking good, you guys. That's right. The glass blowers of the Glass Academy here in Dearborn, Michigan. 25331 Trowbridge Street. What a nice experience that was, guys. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Like I said, that color pattern was intense on the inside, so I was really happy it blew out symmetrical. And not that you always need a symmetrical pumpkin a lot. We actually make pumpkins that are squishers to the side and squatty boys oh, that go sideways. So we can make one of those after I this. I think that sounds like a good one, a squasher. Big time. Let me come next to you. So one of the reasons this question is what it is, we have not decided on our signature pumpkin this year. We've kind of narrowed it down to three different styles, but we want to hear what people's favorite is, what they're interested in, like what color, and, and we kind of match that with our ideas and come up with our new signature. Yeah, well, I mean, you could always just make whatever we want, but that's not the way the glass cabinet is. We like to know what people like, and we like to know what colors people like, and when you got, you know, 500 people telling you that they like a certain color, like the perp, we make some stuff out of the perps. No, right. then we make it yellow, so it cop no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. It's like custom orders. When we get an order, we get a request from, from somebody. We love when you leave a little artistic representation or, or uh, uh, craziness that we can go with, and then you tell us what you like at the same time, because we are artists, and we've got a lot to say about the material and a lot to do with the material. And so to get something to base off of, if you say what makes our pumpkin special, if you say the purple ones, we get, like we say, 500 responses for purple, then we'll go off the purple idea and then add what we know works with purple and the style that goes with purple and make it a sweet, complete piece. I like it. And that's what uh, these e-newses are not always for marketing purposes or for the, the better the Glass Academy. They're literally just about crazy coolness. So send your answers in, folks, and let's see what we got going on. Gotcha, Marcy. Uh-oh. Going for a refill which I need to do as well. So maybe if it's your turn for a pumpkin. Well, I'm going to explain to them what I'm going to do that's a little bit different to make that squasher. So I'll give Marcy this and I'll talk and you fill your water up. Beautiful. Would you take mine and fill it up too? Sure. Stick, it'll, stick a little ice in there. Uh, Jake doesn't need to be there. You can do it. I'm a, I got something to say. All right, guys, we're talking about a squasher pumpkin. And to make a squasher pumpkin, check this out. You need a paddle and you need to put it down over here so you can squash the piece on a cherry wood paddle. If I squash it on the floor, it'll burn the concrete and there'll be all kinds of nastiness on it, but I want it to be prime and beautiful. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the perp squasher out of purple. It's a beautiful color with a really gorgeous iridescent super Goldilocks stem. So I'm gonna grab the purple. I think maybe even a purple stem would be nice. What do you think of that, Marcy? Stem? Yeah. I've been using double zeros. Well, you can use this. Zero work. All right. 
ahead. I'm just switching up some colors over here while Marcy is putting out the opaque violet, beautiful violet. That's gonna be our stem on this thing. And I think, Marcy, I'm gonna want you to take a, a, an opaque, well, you're gonna be working the camera, so Jake's gonna be making this stem. And we're gonna have a uh, opaque core with uh, uh, iris on the outside, Jake. All right, so opaque purple core with iris on the outside. And then the other thing I wanted to do was this. So we did just order up some new uh, color trays too. I saw Marcy just showing off the uh, purple tray there. I got a box of 36 brand new trays that we're gonna be switching it up and getting everything clean and delicious over in the color area. And then all the extra ones we'll take out to the Renaissance and we can have designated Renaissance color trays, folks. Because it does get crazy out there and things get broke and dropped and fucked so we, wild. Yup. There we go. So what's the story with that, Marcy? Well, essentially, uh, yeah. all of our pipes are currently rusting, aside from maybe like five. Um, so I went out to the store and I bought this, and we tried it on one of the pipes earlier, and it just sh started shining again. It was great. worked like a dream. Nice. I, I honestly didn't think it was going to work that well because they were so rusty and dusty feeling and hard to grip. Right. That they just. It's smooth now. They're I smooth. love it. Works pretty good. Well, chalk one up for Marcy, everybody. Yeah. Ooh, let me get it. <laughs> that was a check mark. She did an amazing thing. I love it. Looks pretty sweet in the shop here. Rust is a problem. I realized through some forums that it also has a lot to do with your hands. And when you sweat on the pipes all day, you put them away, they sit there with salty water. That's when they get really rusty. So we could also do a collaboration of wiping pipes down and uh, wiping them off in the morning, but there's at least an hour of setup every time we come in the shop. And someone's gotta be here an hour before we start because you gotta turn the hole on. And then you set up for a good half an hour, get out your color, get out your trays, get out everything else to prepare for the day. And there's a lot of back end work that you don't all necessarily see when we just pop these shows on and get down to business. Maybe you saw them in the first 10 or 15 or 20 shows because they were hectic. And they're still on Facebook and YouTube. How many of y'all are watching on YouTube too? And actually, you wouldn't comment on Facebook if you were watching on YouTube. 23. About 23 on YouTube right now. That's pretty cool. Uh, I love YouTube a lot, and it's a great platform for streaming. We love both of these platforms, and things are amazing. I figured I'd do a small gather, one gather here, folks. Just a real small gather. That's right. Hey, and Drake, if you're still uh, looking for the email, it's right here if you want to pan that onto the screen. enews at glassacademy.com, folks, is the email that you send the enews question to. Or he can send it through the website, the contact us page. And or while he's on the there, he, he could fill out a custom order form, couldn't he? Yeah, you could fill out a custom order form How as well. Work? How does that work? Well, we do all kinds of custom work, and if you go to the Contact Us page, you have the option to customize a piece. And if you see this cup that Marcy's drinking out of here tonight, and you say, I love that iridescent ball, I love the iridescent stamp, I don't love the color of that, you can take a screenshot of this right now with my face in it, and then put little arrows on it, or just say, hey, I want this exact mug in blue or green, or anything that you want to customize, I'll collaborate with you and one of the artists here at the Glass Academy will create the piece for you. So that's a pretty cool option on the Glass Academy website. Uh, another question I saw or heard just from Marcy is when are we gonna do the Wheel of Names, which means we're gonna be giving away from last week this beautiful tumbler that Michelle wanted to take home. And uh, you know you can't do that with the giveaway. We're giving it away to one of you all and that's gonna be given away real soon here. I think she took a bathroom break or a water break and uh, she's just letting her computer cool down on some ice packs. 
but we will be getting to that real soon and someone's going to be winning. Tanya, Lucy's doing amazing out there. Got back home in New York. That's my sister, folks, and part of the family business here. And she's off in the woods farming on a farm, having an amazing time. She's doing incredible. Robin said Marcy's good on the camera. Love to hear it. I think she's doing an amazing job as well. Representing, that's the Marver folks. I know I've asked for spelling on that many times before. Mary's hoping for the tumbler. I love it. Deanna, I have not received your custom order for Ren Fair yet. I do not believe. Perhaps it's sitting in my inbox. Maybe that was something from today. Uh, but if not, I will reach out to me again and we'll see what the deal is. Hello? Keep going. Keep going. Good. Look at that color change. Maybe too, Deanna, it's something I just forgot. But look at the perch there. Beautiful. All right, how about a bit? You got it. What's that tech support? Wheel of names after this piece, folks. Judging by the time, we may be going into OT after that for a little bit of giveaway action. Oh, Jake, I didn't squash it. Well, what the heck? We got a round one. Well, I'll do a squasher for the giveaway. All right, we got enough time? Well, we got time. That's all we have is time. We even love the OT sometimes. A little bit of OT, makes me miss the hockey season a little bit. So this is gonna be on a, out of purple you're saying? Uh, purple in the core. Opaque oh. purple in the core and iris on the outside. Oh, squash or not, that's a beaut. Need one more second on this here. Yeah. Sticky lolly combo. I think you're right. So this is a little bit of a different stem because I asked Jake to put that opaque purple in the core. And then he's going to gather over with crystal and put a light iridescence over that. So we've got a super secret, sexy, underlying purple. It was just all the S's. So I've got a lot of perps <laughs> under here. One shot yes, of is. gold real fast so it doesn't take all away right, from it. Jake's got it going. But it's there. The tricky thing and the reason it took me a little extra long here is because I accidentally did it on a mini punny. So even more so than usual, I need to make sure my heating is all completely correct all right, here. you going in? I'm dropping on this one. So I was letting, I got more glass, I let the core stiffen up really hard so that it doesn't pull off. The worst thing is when you stick it on there and pull it off and you have like a super stringer. Great mold reaction here. Liking it. Oh, yeah. Big boy. Going thinner at the end for the finishing touch. Bringing it right back now. Boom. Yeah. It's serious. Cereal. Cereal. 
one even brought tech support out to take pictures. Watch the color change along here now as he hits it with the iridescent torque. I went for the really tiny optics, so it's very light ribs on there. Iridescence. You don't want to over reduce it because you want that purple to shine through. Is that straight parallel? Oh yeah. Nice. Oh, that one's going to be a crazy one. Tucking them in there. Nice, nice, nice. That was a sweetie. All right, all right. Purple on purple. I love it. Hmm? Well, how about a wheel of names? How about some free glass? And I'll put a blowpipe up. All right, here it goes, folks. The wheel of names. It's that time of day where we're going to be we're going to be going for it. 125 people to win this amazing cup. Here it is. Watch what happens. Oh, Hello. Pat Overdorf, 40. That okay. could hopefully not his shoe size. <laughs> he would have a huge feet if it Over was a 40. 40. Europe is 40. Europe is a little different. That could be an extra small You're foot. You're right, Europe. I wear a 46 in European. And that's a size 12, folks. All right. So she's going to write that down, and we're going to let you know the true name. Congratulations, folks. If that is indeed Pat, if that's their name, then congratulations to Pat on an awesome, uh, sweet tumbler. And I'm going to be taking it to uh, Squisherville. You, you sure you don't want me to go to Squash Town? I'm pretty positive. <laughs> Dang. I'm ready I think to go. there's enough time. No. no. <laughs> Darn. Oh, yeah. You guys, I can't believe I spaced on that thing and didn't squash it. And I got everything ready, too. I think I should probably make the giveaway. We got a flip for it? Flip the coin. All right. Flip it. We just flipped it, and I got it. Uh, <laughs> you did the warmer upper, I'll do the giveaway. Uh, well, in the beginning, you were like, you can do the warmer upper. Now you're like all excited. <laughs> hey. And you see how it goes, you guys? We just. Hey, we're always fighting. Just to blow glass. We love it. But that, that purple one turned out great. You guys are gonna minds are gonna be blown when that comes out of the Anila reveal on Thursday because that thing's beautiful. The spider one, the first one Jake made is super sweet. So we got some tasties in there and it's gonna be a nice reveal. So the way that works is for those of you who know, you're gonna hear it again, but Sometime in the afternoon on Thursday, we do a live Anila reveal so you can see all the true beautiful colors. And then all those pieces go live at six o'clock Thursday night and you can buy what we made tonight. Uh, if we get custom orders, which we love custom orders and we've got certain ones for cer certain weeks because people wanna make sure they're watching the show the night their piece is being made. Uh, nobody's scheduled tonight so we didn't have any customs, but give us a call or go on contact us and send a custom order sheet to Jake because we love customs, especially pumpkins. Get your kids, get your families, call your grandma and grandpa and have them come over and order them a pumpkin and have them watch it being made in Denmark while we're making it here. If you're from Denmark. You could fly to Denmark though, and, right? All right, Jake's got it going. He's going traditional. Yeah, I, I gotta say for the giveaway, I feel like uh, if someone's getting lucky and winning a random pumpkin that they might as well get at least a traditional sweet with an iridescent stem squasher pumpkin. So that's the plan. But I am gonna put some orange dots on it, which I love, orange on orange, super traditional. The way you put dots is I only take a flash like this, boom. It's all the heat I put on the color to melt it in and then come over to the dots. And it only picks up, I'm probably getting like a 25% coat here. Marcy, real quick while Jake's reheating. There's the winner. Pat, Pat Overdorf, Pat Overdorf, 40. 
<laughs> but that's it, baby. Pat's got this sweet, I don't know if that's a man or a woman. It could be either one because it's Pat. That name could be either way. But this person won this sweet piece. Make sure you reach out to us because we're going to send you an email. And I think everybody who wins pays for shipping, right? Yep, all you got to do is pay 20 bucks for shipping and we ship this and the value of one of our tumblers is, how much is a tumbler? This is a $52 piece, guys. All right, he's blowing air in there. So I got to remember here, I think this is why Chris wanted to make this one so much, is the squisher. Because I made a lot of round pumpkins over the past couple months, but what I haven't done is make a squisher. I could help. That's all right. I'm gonna go oh, ahead and shape it up here. Darn. Then I'm gonna drop it in the mold. And then I'm gonna take it to Squishville. Going Which, to Squasher Town? We're all gonna see how that works here real soon now. There's a big difference between a squisher and a squasher. These are squashers. We You're sell right. squashers. You're right. You gotta come up with a whole new pumpkin design if you wanna be a squisher. <laughs> and I could imagine a few, but maybe that's something we gotta come up with. The squisher. Because then you can put them next to each other, one after another, and you can just say, squish, squash, squish, squash, squish, <laughs> squash. Now that sounds fun. Oh, that's like what a duck, the noise a duck makes when it's walking through a muddy, a muddy area, your yard or something. It's like squish, squash, squish, squash. Then you hear- A duck? Then you, then you hear, huh, huh. Oh no, that's a penguin. <laughs> what? How about a bench blow? Blow. Good. Looks like it's about a good reheat and on to Squasher Blow. Town. Good. How many people I can't what? Hear. Uh, du amazing ducks. That's all I heard. Ducks. How many people grew ducks? Here we go. We did a, I hear you. There's the I heard action. the squash action going on. All right, now I got it all together. Well, the squash mechanism was going on, and now you know how to put the thing on, right? Yep, just like this. Michelle was saying, how many people had ducks when they were growing up? Not chickens, not pheasants, ducks. not turkeys. We're talking ducks. Such an interesting dynamic when Chris walks we away. We had them. We hatched them. In the them. background. I mean, we were living in the city. But you guys hear them just as loud. What is going on on this bench? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Got a stamp on there, folks. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen. So the real tricky part of these is not what has happened up until now. It's putting the stem on. And you have to prepare the knockoff area for the stem because the angle is completely different. So I need to run through it in my brain here, which is I'll knock it off like this. No, right on the angle. Flat spot on the angle, just like that. Boom, so it's straight up, yep. I see, like that. Yeah. And yeah, then it's just a regular stem. I'm, ga I'm gathering up the stem. Gather it right up then. What color? Let's do gold. Iris. Iris is the lighter of the two golds that we use, and I think it dec uh, accents the uh, orange really nice so you can't go wrong with an iris stem you're, you're reducing that you're dropping no no reduction we're off nice and clean Thinner. Thank you. Oh yeah. 
Looking sexy. Ooh, but now the thing about this one is, you guys, is that it's, it looks like it's, look at how it's gonna sit squasher town. So you can move it on over to that uh, table at some point and it's looking good. Thank you. This is the curl down I love so much. Pop it right down on there. Then you hit the tip and you give the tip a little extra squish so it sits into the body nice and correct. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Look at that. So hence the squasher, everybody, doesn't sit straight. It's that one that got bumped by the tractor in the field and it's sitting on its side, but it's just as juicy and tasty as all the other ones. Mm -hmm. And we got a beautiful full annealer of action. Oh folks. yeah. Pretty Woo. sweet. All right. I love it. That was the giveaway too. So somebody's gonna win that sweet squasher. Yeah. I love it. Be careful. I was just thinking there's something hot sitting back there somewhere. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> yeah, that'd be a horrible sizzler. Oh my gosh. All right. Tech support saying that we got new people on the show, which is pretty cool. Uh, every show, you know, our, our viewership's usually pretty steady. It's fluctuated over the 124 shows we've done, but uh, every show, no matter what, we get new viewership. And that's how social media works and how we promote as much as we're promoting. It's uh, pretty big time. So we try and keep things really simple, but as people join into the show, we've been doing it for a long time here. We've got veterans that watch the show here, but we also have brand new people. So please ask questions and get to know us and what we're doing here at the shop because we're here to talk about it and talk about glass. Yeah, exactly. It's an educational show and an entertaining show. Yep. Spread the word, tell your friends, you guys. It's all grassroots marketing. Spread the word about us. We are the hottest show on the internet. Uh, I think we're gonna show you the table a little bit more here while we're getting ready to sign out. We got about a couple minutes left. Yeah, we know it's early pumpkin season. This is teaser for our exclusive pumpkin show, virtual pumpkin show coming up on October 10th. But uh, the one guy, if I don't highlight any of the other ones that I'm still surprised is still here is this super unique, one of a kinder. You just don't see a pumpkin like this anywhere. That's just insane. But they're numbered here, that's nine and eight there. These are available on the website, folks, and I always say this is what keeps promoting the shows, this is what keeps our business afloat. This is how we make money making glass art. So uh, if you love what you're seeing here, support us by buying a pumpkin or buying anything else, and we will be out at the Renaissance Festival as well. Yeah, or buy a pumpkin and put it, keep it in the box, enjoy it a little bit, and then when you go to your friends for a harvest dinner, bring over a little uh, housewarming gift for them and give them a beautiful pumpkin from the Glass Academy, guys, because people will be blown away if you show up and give them a pumpkin. Very true. Yeah. All right. So there we go, Marcy. <laughs> I think we're gonna be wrapping it up here. We got a lot of beautiful things happening. We'll let uh, you guys finish on the table there as Marcy's redoing the whole table for you. A beautiful display. Those are available online. We've had a beautiful show. We will see you all Thursday. We'll also see you for our Patreon show, which we will, uh, a lot of our dedicated supporters follow us there and we'll explain our future plans on that show as well and uh, stay updated folks we got great things coming through down the pipeline remember you saw us on the gathering point guys